What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. As always, I am Roggle. We are back into the NFL. We missed week three. My apologies. Had some uh, busy life stuff going on, so we'll come back into it. Week four. In a busy week, fun week. I did watch the games over week three. It was a fun one. Eagles pulled out a great victory over the Saints. It was a fun one to watch. So let's get into week four. Starting off on Thursday night. Cowboys, Giants. Oh, NFC East matchup should be should be a fun one. The uh, divisional games are always tough. Uh, Cowboys looked like absolute hot garbage last week, like they should. Giants came out with a victory over the over the Browns, so they looked pretty good last week as well. But uh, again, overpaid quarterback with a mediocre team, uh, and then you have the Cowboys with an overrated quarterback and a mediocre receiving core, in my opinion. Uh, but with this one, as much as I, I become a Giants fan twice a year, and it's every time they play the Cowboys, um, I do think the Cowboys take this one. I did pick the Cowboys last week, and I was glad to be wrong on that one as well. Let's see them fall one and two. Um, but yeah, I do think the Cowboys take this one in a Thursday night. I don't know if it's going to be a blowout, to be honest. I think this one stays within 10 points. Um, and if it is a blowout, it's only because the Cowboys came in after getting their butt kicked last week, and they got something to prove. Um, so yeah, look for that one. Uh, if you're wanting to do anything with that, as far as throwing any bets down, I mean, you're looking at easy, easy touchdown scores. Um, CD Lamb is going to be one. And then I mean, other than that, I don't really know if you're going to put any money down on Zeke, um, deck, I think two plus touchdowns to throw on that one as well. Um, Devin Singletary may be able to rush for one, but that's going to be really tough to, Tough to put anything out on, but um, definitely look for the over in this one uh, and the spread for sure. I would check that out as well. Moving into the Sunday games, we get the noon game, Eagles-Buccaneers there at Tampa. Um, after last week's performance for the, by the defense, Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis looking pretty damn good, except for Jalen Carter looking like a child on the sideline, hadn't be held back. Um, the Buccaneers didn't did not look good last week either. Uh, Eagles looked decent defense-wise. Offense looked horrible. Uh, this one's probably going to be a tough game, uh, but I will take the Eagles in this one as well. I do think it's going to be a close game, and more than likely, depending on if A.J. Brown's back, if Devontae Smith is back. I know they've lost uh, the return man in Covey with a busted shoulder. Uh, Lane Johnson was sick and, and had a concussion last week as well. No updates on those guys that I've seen so far. I've been checking. Um, but for the most part, I think this is going to be if they, if they kick field goals in this game, since Sirianni does not like to kick field goals, he likes to go for fourth down every time, likes to leave points off the board. So I look for this one to be a touchdown game, if not a last second field goal, if we, if anybody decides to take a field goal. But I do think the Buccaneers drop to the Eagles in this one to start off Sunday. Uh, moving to the next game, Saints-Falcons. Two teams that I think have really – Really shown who they are. The Falcons with Kirk Cousins have really surprised me with how they played. Um, Kyle Pitts, B. John Robinson, even, like I said, Kirk Cousins has came out looking really, really strong in this one uh, throughout, throughout the season. Um, didn't think he was going to do what he was doing, but, man, he, a few weeks ago, they beat, came back and beat the Eagles. Um, Drake Lennon, Kyle Pitts, B. John Robinson, that's a squad to have on your team right there. But on the other side of the ball, you got Derek Carr. Alvin Kamara, who likes to score multiple touchdowns a game. Um, Rashid Rahid, Shahid, Rashid Shahid, uh, as well as uh, Olave on that team, is definitely a team that will take you deep, push it as much as they can, and also push buttons as in they've, uh, they've adopted the dirty plays again like they did in the past with the uh, bounty gate, bounty hunting scandal that they had way back in the day. Um, so they're saying, but, you know, dirty hits are dirty hits, but, um, it's football again. It's going to happen. Passion's in the game. So it is what it is. Um, was it a dirty hit that they put on Devontae Smith? Maybe. Was it in the passion of hitting it? Maybe. But if it's, if it is what it was when he got up and when one of the players got up and spit on him, I mean, that's just, that's just straight up disrespectful and uncalled for. But, uh, we'll see in this one. I do think the Saints pull this one out as well, uh, in a, dominate you know a 12 two, two, two touchdown game at least in this one uh 14 plus points i don't see them 
uh, <laughs> dropping anywhere near how they did last week, being held three points for majority of the game, and then the last quarter starting to, start to score points. So look for the Saints to definitely pull out some some big plays in this one and Derek Carr to go off again like he had the first two weeks in that one as well. Um, again, if you want touchdowns in this one, I would definitely go for B. John Robinson. I would go for Kamara for sure. If you wanted to do two-plus touchdowns for Kamara, one for Bijan. John. Um, Pitts is hit or miss. Uh, I would do – I would look also at Carr's yards to see what the odds are for the, for the yards on that one. Kirk Cousins. Yards as well, as he likes to sling it if he can, uh, if, if London can get open. Uh, but I would look more at Carr's yards and, like I said, with uh, Kamara's touchdowns, Bijan at least to score and either London or, or Pitts to score a touchdown as well in that one. Uh, but I do think the Saints pull this, pull this one in pretty uh, dominant fashion. Uh, next noon game, Vikings-Packers. Vikings are looking surprisingly, surprisingly good. With Sam Darnold behind behind center, um, man, it's I did not I did not think I don't think anybody else really thought that the Vikings were going to come out playing the ball that they're playing. Aaron Jones goes in goes back into Green Bay. It's at home for Green Bay. He gets to go back in a uh, redemption game and see what he does to this team. I would definitely look for him to make, possibly pop off and Justin Jefferson to at least have one one touchdown as well, or they may spread the ball around a little bit more. Um, I know T.J. Hawkinson is not back yet. They've, I think they've started to try and bring him back if they open the window. I think I read that, and I could be wrong. Um, but again, Malik Willis with the Packers um, is looking surprisingly well. The guy's running the ball. He's putting, putting the team on his back and doing what he can to get the ball to whoever he needs to, hand it off, running for touchdowns as well. So this is going to be, I think, a close game, um, a defensive game at that. But uh, I do think that even if, no matter how strong their defense is, they're going to put up points. This is going to be, like I said, a defensive game, but it's going to be a high-scoring game in the matter, in the matter of they're going to make them work for each each touchdown or each set of points that they get. Um, more likely also, I would look for three-plus field goals combined, if not four, combined between these two. Um, but again, if you're looking to, to bet on this one, this is going to be a hit or miss. I would definitely put money on Aaron Jones. Um, I would not touch anything with Josh Jacobs. I would take Malik Willis to have a, a rushing touchdown of some kind before uh, Josh Jacobs does. Uh, I don't know what's up with him. I don't know if they're going to be able to integrate him in as well as they wanted to into this one or if he's just not not as good running back as a lot of people thought when he was with Las Vegas. Uh, not that he was anything outstanding there, but um, maybe he does something, but I don't see, I don't see m- myself putting anything – Money wise, down him scoring, I uh, would I would look for Justin Jefferson and uh, Aaron Jones to score something at that point, and also Malik Willis. Um, but I do think the uh, I think the Packers give the Vikings their first loss. I think Malik Willis is gonna is gonna keep rolling, and they're gonna shut down the Vikings enough to where it's gonna be again probably a three point game, field goal game, last second field goal type. Um, I don't think it's gonna be a dominant performance by either one, but I do think the Packers pull this one out. In that one, uh, next noon game, Rams versus Bears. Bears are looking very, very mid at this point. Um, I want the Bears to do better. I want Caleb Williams to do to succeed within that organization. I think I've said it before. He, he looks good. He just obviously being a rookie has a lot of work to do. Um, but you're on the other side of the ball. You got Matthew Stafford um, with no real receivers. I mean, you got. Naku is out, Cup is out. So I mean, you're looking at your your third your third looks and your fourth looks, pulling guys off of the off the practice squad almost to try and you know make a team out here. Um, Kyrie Williams though is looking good. Uh, definitely look for him to try and go off again. They're getting the ball down the down the field in order for him to score goal line touchdowns and things like that. So um, the Bears are going to be out dominated in this one. It's it's going to be hands down the Rams game. Um, I don't think this, the Bears score any more than 10 points in this one. I think the Rams pull this one out in a 21-10 style type game. You know, Rams at least score three, three to four touchdowns, and Bears are gonna they're gonna put up points, but it's not gonna be anything barely double digits in this one too. So look for that Rams to take that one. Next game, Bengals Panthers. This is another 12 o'clock game. Man, the Bengals uh, Bengals struggled on Monday night. Jamar Chase 
didn't uh, didn't disappoint though. He did his thing. Uh, Gasecki got got in there, did his thing as well. Zach Moss tried, um, but I mean you're going against a benched Bryce Young with Andy Dalton behind center now, who came out and just decided to show he's not done. He's he's old but ready to still play. Threw four four touchdowns and took the Panthers to their first one of the season. Um, and he's going back to where he used to play in Cincinnati. So this one this one might be surprising for a lot of people. I'm gonna take the Panthers in this one in a redemption game for Andy Dalton going to Cincinnati and throw not four touchdowns, but throw a couple touchdowns and possibly hand it off to the Miles Sanders or Miles Sanders or Juba Hubbard to score as well. Um, but I do think if Joe Mixon is healthy, he'll play a part in this. I know he's worked, he was out last week due to an ankle injury. Um, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, a duo that definitely cannot be slept on, and the Panthers' defense may not be able to keep up with them uh, when it comes to that, though. And like I said, Gusecki underneath with anything he can do as well. So watch for that to happen. Um, I don't think it's going to be a blowout, but I do think it's going to be a close game. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say every game is going to be a last-second field goal. By any means, but I do want to see um, a fun game on this one. I will I will watch this one as well. Let's see if uh, Andy Dalton can do the same thing. But again, I'll take the Panthers in this one in a uh, in a touchdown game. You know, and be be funny to see if it goes in overtime as well. But uh, I do think it is at least a touchdown game. Moving on to the next twelve o'clock game: Jaguars Texans. Trevor Lawrence struggled to get it going last week. Um, Etn. Man, it seems like every time I look at look at that dude, he's slipping and sliding or falling down somewhere whenever he's trying to run the ball, catch the ball, or, or anything like that. Um, they couldn't get Christian Kirk really going to do anything. Um, but, man, it's a, it's a team that has the right coaching. I mean, Doug Peterson led the Eagles to the Super Bowl, won that. And, I mean, the guy, the guy can coach. They have what they need. It's, it's just not clicking for some reason. Um, on the other side, C.J. Stroud, um, I think it's it might be his sophomore slump. He came out looking good, struggled last week. Um, this week we'll see if he can do it against the Jags. Jags have a a mediocre defense, so they may be able to do something there. Um, and we'll see what they can do. But I, I don't know what's going to happen with them as well. So uh, I want to see if they can have any type of performance from uh, Tank Dell get him involved again, uh, anything else with them. But, uh, man, I really don't know which way to go on this one. This is kind of one of those ones I think I won't, I won't watch this game. It'll be uh, probably have it on red zone, and I'll pay attention, you know, just to whoever, if I have anybody on fantasy or whatnot, uh, which I don't think I do. But uh, definitely trying to keep up with with this game is going to be in the back of my mind. Um, I'll, take a, I'll take a chance here, and I will say that uh, Texas pulled this one off. C.J. Stroud has a – has a decent game, hopefully. You know, hopefully he's not in that slump. But uh, the Jags, the way the Jags played last week, they just didn't look good. Couldn't get anything going. Um, we'll see what, what they do with the Texans to try and get them, uh, get them another win this week. Next new game, Broncos and Jets. Uh, Broncos. Surprised me last week, for sure. Jets even surprised me last week with how they played. You know, they didn't pull it off, but it was a decent game as well um but that just defense is going to shut down Bo Nix and anything that the Broncos trying to do in this game uh I'm I'm looking for a dominant game out of the Jets on this one uh be lucky to see the Broncos score you know anything over 10 points in this one um Brees Hall Garrett Wilson Aaron Rodgers I mean it's it's a uh a smorgasbord word of, of players on this team that can score a touchdown if not two uh, Brees Hall is an amazing running back. Guy can do do it all um, when it comes to catching, running. But uh, we'll see what happens with that one. So I'm taking the Jets in a dominant performance over the over the Broncos. Take anything you can, points wise, spread wise, and like that over these guys. So great defense, great offense. Surprisingly, with the Jets now moving forward. So we'll see what happens. Um, Steelers Colts. This is the last noon game. Justin Fields is looking decent for sure. Um, can't remember if they're still. I think they're undefeated. I didn't even check, but uh, they're definitely looking good. Colts are looking good as well. Uh, it's just 
Anthony Richardson and what he's doing, Jonathan Taylor. Um, and other than that, I haven't heard anything really out of, of Pittman. I haven't seen anything dominant from him at all. Um, Taylor's pretty much this team. Richardson's trying to do his thing. But uh, it's not going to surprise me to see the Steelers roll on this one in a, uh, you know, a 14, 14 to 17 style game. Um, as in Steelers scoring 14 to 17 points and look for the Colts to score around that, you know, that 10, 12 point type game. Um, I don't think it's going to be a thing too dominant by the Steelers, but I do think they pull that one out as well. Moving on to the 3 o'clock games, Patriots and 49ers. 49ers are down bad. Um, McCaffrey apparently is going to Germany to get some opinions on his Achilles that he's got going on. I cannot remember the name of what it's called, but the Achilles injury issue that he has going on right now. Getting a second opinion, third, fourth opinion, whatever he's trying to get. Uh, Kittle's out. Debo's out. I mean, you you have Juwan Jennings stepping up. Ayuk is, is still there. So luckily they didn't trade him or get anything for him. So he's still there to step up for, for them. Juwan Jennings went off last week doing his thing. Uh, Mason stepped into the running back, is doing his thing as well. Purdy had an MRI done, and I haven't seen any results on it for his back. Apparently he was having back issues after the game on Sunday. So no update on him as of right now. He is questionable, but um, I mean, he's young. If it's nothing that's going to hinder him in any way, I'd look for him to play. Uh, the guy the guy wants to play. He wants to you know support his team, stay with his team, and do what he can for the team. So uh, I don't, I'm not looking for Purdy to miss any time here at, at all in this one. Um, and then, it's, it's just, I don't even know. Is it Jacoby Brissett, Brissett that's the quarterback for the Patriots, surprisingly? Uh, Ramondi Stevenson is doing 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 well as well behind, behind everybody. Um, but I don't think they're going to have what it takes to put anything against the 49ers. Um, Patriots defense is, is mid as well. Uh, but I think this this is going to be one. I don't think they're going to run away with it, but it's going to be a close game as well. A touchdown separation in this one, but the 49ers take it in that one. Um, next 3 o'clock game, 49ers, Commanders, and Cardinals. Uh, man, Commanders. Commanders are rolling in a very, very odd way. Jane Daniels is looking decent. Brian Robinson Jr. is looking decent. Scary Terry is has voiced his frustration, but in a way of being a leader on the team, saying that, yes, he knows it's going to take time. He's got to work out the kinks. He's got to work on timing. He's being everything he can to help out Daniels and what he's doing as being the rookie quarterback and being the vet receiver that he is, trying to help out any way he can as well. I did see also that Eckler is hurt, so he's questionable going into this week as well, if not out by this point. Um, so look for Brian Robinson Jr. to really try and go off this week. I know he had a couple touchdowns last week as well. Um, so look for them to roll over the Cardinals in this one. Um, I think the Commanders keep keep going, and they're slowly starting to compete for the NFC East within the Eagles and Cowboys. Giants are down there at the bottom, like always. So for some odd reason, the Commanders want to play football this year. So good on them. Um, I like seeing a strong showing from the NC East as long as it's not the Cowboys that are doing it. So they want to keep rolling. Go ahead and do your thing. Uh, but I take the Commanders in this one in probably a three, three to seven point game for the win on that one. Uh, Chiefs Chargers three thirty game. Chiefs. Um, I'm not impressed by the Chiefs. I do not believe in the whole conspiracy of the chief, the refs help the Chiefs to win. Yes, they missed the pass interference call, but if you want to if you want to dissect every single play that happens, you can call probably a holding call on every single play that happens throughout the NFL through every game. There's going to be a holding call on the line somewhere somehow. There's multiple plays. Yes, there was a ref right in front of it. Yes, it could have decided the game. 100% agree. They missed a call. It happens, but again, just because it's the Chiefs, everybody thinks this is that. You know, the the refs are paid. The refs. Are, you know, did this, the rest from their pocket, all this blah, blah, blah. Um, just stop. But it's it's ridiculous. I'm tired of hearing about it. Um, the Chiefs are working on things. I don't know. Travis Kelsey is, you know, apparently on tour right now with Taylor Swift. Instead of doing anything he's trying to do for the team, the guy has, like, less than 40 yards receiving, no touchdowns. He's killing my fantasy team. But um, I'm a huge, huge fan of the Chiefs. Grew up in Kansas City area, so, I mean, 
I'm an Eagles fan first, Chiefs fan, whatever. But um, Super Bowl, yes, I was hands down an Eagles fan. Wanted to see the Chiefs lose, get their ass kicked. Didn't happen. We lost. Um, but the Chargers, uh, they're not going to be able to really. This is a divisional game, and these games are always tough. So I do think it's going to be a tough, uh, close game. But the Chiefs are going to get this one as well, so they're going to continue. Moving on in that one uh, with the win going into next week. So look for the Chargers to follow the Chiefs in that one. The last 330 game, Browns Raiders. The shit, shit bowl. I mean, the Raiders looked horrendous. Browns looked horrendous for the most part. They looked decent last week, but uh, not good enough to beat the Giants. So uh, we'll see what happens with them. Minshew Mania is not, is not popping off as it needs to right now. Uh, Devontae Adams is definitely uh, stressed out, ready to leave the team, it looks like. Uh, there's rumors that he's going to the Steelers for in a trade, but again, social media and every single random thing that pops up, I try to take with a grain of salt because everybody posts something. There's so many different pages for everything. Um, but I think you can physically see the frustration within Devontae Adams as he's on the field, when he's on the bench, everything else, he's just frustrated. With the team, not happy. Uh, he came there because of Derek Carr, and they got rid of Carr, and he's now there still. He's got a, you know, a, a quarterback that's bounced around the league as a backup. Started for sure when he first came in, but now he's starting again. Is he a bad quarterback? No. Um, is he a good backup quarterback? Yes. But you have you have a guy that definitely needs to. Uh, get some more some more rep time with his receivers to get timing down because it's not like he can't do it. It's just it's it's not it's not happening right now. And it will. It'll it'll start going, but uh you're not gonna see the Raiders make a playoff playoff run like that. Uh I think in my opinion this next game, Sunday night football, I think is gonna be the game of the week. Game that I'm really excited to watch. Um probably won't be a barn burner by any means. Um it may be a straight up defensive game and if it's not, it's going to be dominated by one team, and that would be the Bills-Ravens game on Sunday Night Football. They're at Baltimore. Ravens coming off a win that they finally got, um, and the, the Bills just continue to roll with, with that team. They've got everything clicking. Uh, Kincaid is, is one hell of a tight end for that team. Cook is a hell of a running back. Of course, Josh Allen. And before the season even started, everybody was saying that Josh Allen was going to regress and you know, he wasn't going to be able to lead the team and do anything like he had been doing previous years. In my opinion, this is one of his best seasons, best year that he's had um, that I can remember. Now, I don't I don't remember every single season he's played, but watching watching him play and everything he's done so far, he looks he looks good. He looks poised in, in the pocket. He looks like he's ready to just control this entire offense more than he has before and possibly make a Super Bowl run because they've, they've been shot out numerous times for it. Uh, but on their side, Lamar Jackson with uh, DeAndre, DeAndre, Derrick Henry and uh, J.K. Dobbins behind him. Not J.K. Anyway, with Derrick Henry behind him, enough to, to run the ball straight up to get as much as they want. Um, they're looking good. They're looking dominant in many ways, but they've they fell short so many times. Um, so this one I think is definitely going to be a fun one to watch. This will be a close one. Again, if it's if it's not close, I think the Bills will blow them out. I don't see it being um, the Ravens with this one. I don't think the Ravens won this one. I think the Ravens fall. I think the Bills take it in a uh, in a close one. Uh, I don't I don't want to see a blowout by any means. I don't want to see the Bills blow them out because at that point you'll see frustration from from Lamar Jackson. And once he gets frustrated and he gets in his head, I don't think he plays that well. He tries to run too much and get too fancy, and that's when he really just lets the game go. If he can stay in the pocket, and pass like he has been, hand the ball to Henry. Now, he can't run. Obviously, we all know that. We all know Lamar Jackson can run. The the man is a used to be a run first, throw, throw second after that, but I think he's really figured it out. He's throwing the ball. He's handed it off. He will run if he needs to, but he's, he's become a lot smarter and a great quarterback for that Baltimore team. I just think it's going to be a Bills win in this one. And they uh, move, on, move on, taking a Sunday night victory. Now, we have a trend here of last week we had too many nights, and this this coming week we have too many nights. First one at 6.30, Titans-Dolphins. And you have a team that had a lot going for them, then they lost to a, 
And now the receivers in Waddle and Hill are almost silent. You don't hear anything from them. They can't do anything. Uh, A-Chan is pretty much carrying that team. Uh, whoever they had behind center last week needs to probably not be the one um, moving forward, but I think they're stuck until they can find somebody. Uh, I was looking through the league and everything, trying to figure out what they can do. They have, In my opinion, they have two options. They make a trade with the Chiefs to get Carson Wentz, or they make a trade with the Steelers to get Russell Wilson or Justin Fields, one of those two. You have two starting quarterbacks on that team, and also on the Chiefs you have Mahomes. You're not getting Mahomes. Carson Wentz, um, just so you can get somebody in there to possibly get you a couple wins till they figure out for some stupid reason that Tua comes back, which in my opinion, Tua should retire and stay within the organization, do something with the team, you know, become an advocate for, you know, for head trauma, for any of that stuff, P, uh, TBI, things like that, you know, look for something in that manner, save your, save your life in that way, dude, you're, you're young, you've, you've made your money, you know, you just, at this point, you, you look like a toddler falling every time your head is so big and bounces off the ground that you're not helping yourself. Just take care of yourself and, you know, walk off to the end of the sunset and help out the organization or the league some way, stay that, be an advocate in some way. You know, don't, don't end up like some of the guys that are retired and out of the league and even, you know, not around anymore because of stuff that's happened from head trauma. Um, just, well, I wish you. I wish him the best, and for the most part, to just kind of think first before he comes back. Obviously, he's not going to hear any of this, but I'd re- I'd like to see him just kind of step away from football for his own health. Um, but on the Titans side, Will Levis, the dude is is a good quarterback. Just he doesn't he does not show it right now. He's not showing any type of poise. He's making weird throws. Weird things are happening with this team. Um, they really. They really gave it up when they got rid of Derrick Henry that you know last season, um, or I guess this season, in the last season. Um, it just hurt him. DeAndre Hopkins finally started getting the ball. Um, Pollard, I don't, I don't remember him really doing anything either. Um, this one, you're gonna probably see one of the, a low scoring game in this one because uh, it's they have decent defenses. I'll, I'll give the Titans some credit. They have a decent defense. It's not, you know, a dominant defense, but it's enough, I think, to shut down the Dolphins, depending on who they have at quarterback. They may not be able to stop HN. So uh, the running game for the Dolphins will be their saving grace in this one because depending on who, who they have behind quarterback, like I said, if they can get it to, to Tyreek or Waddle or figure out the end of rounds with Tyreek, um, that may work for them, but I don't know how it's going to work for them. I think the Dolphins, honestly, Dolphins take this one in a – a three, three point game. I don't think it's gonna be very high, high scoring at all. Like I said, Dolphins take that in the first Monday night game, followed by the second starts at seven fifteen. Again, this is all Central Time for me, so it's seven fifteen Central here. Seahawks Lions, um, man, the Seahawks are looking good. I'm impressed. Lions are looking good. Uh, St. Brown looks good. Metcalf looks good. Lockett looks decent. Um, Jamar Gibbs, good. You know, it's just one of those things, like, we'll see what happens with this game. It's it's going to be um, – it'll be a fun one to watch as well. I do do kind of hate that they are starting to do too many night games. I know once the uh, the bye weeks start, this will all stop. So after this week, the bye weeks will start to kick in. You won't see any, a whole lot of dual Monday night games. But uh, the Lions in this one, and you're not going to stop the Lions momentum they've got going. Uh, Seahawks, again, they have a decent defense. But I think the Lions are going to pull this one off. Jared Goff is looking too good with what he's doing with that team. Uh, strong and dominant player out of Goff with his arm. Uh, he's definitely seasoned in what he's been doing. He's smart when he comes when it comes to plays. He'll be able to figure out what they need to do to get the win in that one. So look for the Lions to take that one as well in the last one in that game. So that's going to be that's going to be a fun one I think as well. But I think my, my big ones that I'm taking is here as far as putting uh, game of the week, like I said, uh, Bills-Ravens, definitely one going to be a fun one to watch for Sunday night. Um, obviously, I'll be watching Eagles-Bucks Sunday afternoon. Uh, Thursday night game should be fun, too, between the Cowboys and Giants. I do I do want to see the Giants win that one, but they probably won't. Um, and just looking through it, I will I'll probably watch a little bit of the Chiefs-Chargers and the Patriots Niners 
you know, the rest of them I'll kind of just have on, you know, red zone or whatever. Um, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be surprised if, if a lot of my picks end up being flopped just because this is an any given Sunday type of season right now. Um, you're seeing a lot of teams win that probably shouldn't have won. And surprisingly, it's happening. And it, that's what, that's what I love about football is it's it, like I said, any given Sunday, fun stuff can happen. Um, but one thing I will do, and I said I was going to start doing it, was I talked about some bets. Uh, if you and I did, won some money over the weekend betting on just touchdowns. Uh, it's hard to hit, very hard to hit. You can hit big money on it if you get them right. So if I wanted to, you know, go through and just pick some of the ones that are going to hit Barkley, Saquon is probably going to get at least one, easily. Kamara, easily. Um, Aaron Jones. Probably easily going to get a touchdown. I'll go through the noon games here. Um, Tyree Williams, more than likely, probably going to get a touchdown against that Bears defense. Um, you can hit Justin Jefferson as well against that Packers defense. Uh, just depends on, you know, how they how they play it. But they know how to play against against him. They don't know how to play against Sam Darnold. So we'll see. Um, you can probably throw that on there too. Um, Anybody else really within noon games that you're trying to look? Jonathan Taylor, probably the other one to hit. Uh, Brees Hall. I mean, if you just throw out just the running backs, you could probably put put it on those seven seven running backs that I said, six or seven, six running backs that I said, between Brees Hall, Jonathan Taylor, uh, Kyrie Williams, Aaron Jones, Alvin Kamara, and Barkley. Those guys right there are probably more likely going to hit a touchdown. And if you're betting, you know, five bucks even on that one, Depending on what you're using, I and mean, you could probably hit a couple hundred bucks just on just on a five dollar bet at that point. Um, going into three o'clock games, if you're looking for anything else like that, uh, it's going to be hit or miss because like the Chiefs don't have Pacheco. Uh, they've got Steele there. I think Kareem Hunt's going to start coming in and taking a few a few reps as well, uh, but I wouldn't see him doing anything really at all. And I know he's with the practice squad right now, so I don't really know if he's going to play. Um, Samaj so P. Ryan's still there, but like I wouldn't, I don't see any three o'clock bets that I'm that I'm putting down on anything really. I mean, I can try if I wanted to like reach, I could definitely th- look at you know Ayuk or, or Juwan Jennings with the 49ers depending on if Purdy's playing. I guess it's gonna depend on if, if Purdy plays, then yes, maybe we can do it that way. Um, but like Cardinals, no, uh, Commanders, maybe Brian Robinson Jr. Um, in that one. It's just there's it's, it's too hit or miss with that, those those three o'clock games. I think your your money your big money is going to be in your noon games. I think if you really want to hit hit big money or like that within noon, look for your noon games to hit hit your big money. If you want to parlay those together, definitely look at that. And if you wanted to parlay those with one or two of the three o'clock games, just be aware when you do it. Um, or you could also even just take that noon, skip three o'clock, and parlay it with the the Sunday night games. Uh, James Cook, definitely. Uh, Derrick Henry is going to be hit or miss, in my opinion, against the Bills' defense. Um, I don't think I don't think Josh Allen gets a rushing touchdown either. Uh, you could definitely, like I said, Cook and maybe Kincaid could do it, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't put any money on Likely or Mark Andrews either. But I think Kincaid would be the other one I'd even look at. And I wouldn't touch anything Monday night either. But, yeah. So, we'll look how we did uh, after this week. I'll make sure I remember it. Write it down. Because I forget to write it down every time. After I uh, go back and listen to this episode. But we'll talk about it next week. We'll see how we did. And I will throw out some. And those six that I just said. Those six running backs. I will be putting a bet down on those ones. And we'll see how we did. Hopefully we take this one. Come out with some money on the back end. We'll see. Maybe. Maybe a couple hundred bucks will be a little bit up. You know, I don't, like I said, I don't throw big money because I don't have a lot of money. So, uh, again, make sure you check us out, twoguysonegamepad.com for all the merch. Anything else we got going on there, we can do any type of merch you guys want. Uh, as of right now, we cannot do anything NFL-wise because, obviously, licensed stuff. But we can we can get anything else made, you know, anything fun. Um, check us out Thursday nights with myself and Sig, the other half of Two Guys, One Game Pad. We play Wars on majority of the time. We're on there. Just letting off Steam 2 Dez making it almost to the entire work week, you know, school week, everything else. Um, I know that our episodes have kind of been hit or miss with school and life going on. It's just things are 
things are changing back and forth. Um, hopefully, once we get things going a little more into the season, uh, we'll get a little more uh, a little more time on here. You'll see us together again at some point. But I'll try and keep pumping these out. Again, I'm sorry I missed week three. Hopefully, I can stay with every week, and we'll keep this going. You know, a 30, 45-minute podcast real quick, covering the games. And next week, we'll go over them. Until the next one, bye, bitch.